All right, this is money time. You get one shot at sticking this top. If you screw it up, start all over again. Every once in a while I like to do a video on using plastic laminate because it's one of those things that doesn't get a lot of attention. But for people who are learning to use tools and interested in broadening the variety of things they can do, using laminate is really a good skill to develop. It doesn't take a lot of high-end tools and the laminate itself doesn't have to be expensive, but you can complete some very nice projects with it and improve overall as a woodworker in the process. Here I'm building a countertop for our Family's computer guru, Nick. Works? Yeah, it's not in red or freaking out oh, anymore. Cool. He helps keep my video producing computer up to date by upgrading components it's periodically. And I have owed him a computer yeah, desk for some yeah. time now, so that's what we're doing. Nick built his own computer about a year and a half ago with the best components he could come up with at the time. He's a great guy to have around. We're going to combine a new mobile desk from my office with a built-in computer, which is a project I'm really looking forward to. So Nick will definitely be around for that build. I will add another video about the full build of his desk, but let's take a look at how the top is built and how we can install black plastic laminate on a 66 by 30 inch piece of particle board to give us a real solid and functional desktop. Particle board is what I like to use as the material to apply laminate to if at all possible. It is very heavy to work with, but it's also quite inexpensive relative to other products and is a great surface to apply the adhesive that we use for sticking laminate. The first thing I'm doing with my top is to build the edges up to an inch and a half thickness, which is pretty much the standard thickness I use for any top I build. Now I could round these corners if I wanted to, but for simplicity's sake, I'm leaving them square. In addition to giving me the right thickness to stick my edge pieces for the countertop to, these other support pieces I'm adding to the bottom of the countertop add stiffness and rigidity to the overall top. As I said, the only negative thing about particle board is that each piece you add does add more weight when it comes time to move it around, but it also makes it very durable. These pieces I'm adding to the length of the countertop not only are giving additional strength to the structure, but they also provide a flat surface all the way down the top to allow it to rest on the cabinet base units evenly so you don't have to put any other kind of fillers in to get the countertop to rest flat on the base units. You can also then screw through the support pieces in your cabinet base units and into these strips to attach the top to the cabinet bases. I'm sure I'm not the only one that this happens to, but every once in a while I'll take a measurement for something like this and even measure twice. When I go make the cut and bring it back, it's just a little too big. Okay, that happens, so I measure again, or maybe twice, knowing that I need to trim off only a little bit. When I bring it back the second time, it's still too tight. Now I trust my eyes more than I do the tape, so I go back to the trim saw to make one more cut without marking it, and when I get back, I know that it will fit, but I still wonder what's wrong with my tape, so I check it one more time, and it still doesn't make sense. Oh well, the piece fits even though the math doesn't. Now all that's left before I start putting on the laminate is to add one more strip of particle board that's three quarter inches thick by an inch and a half wide to the front edge of the countertop. I do this because it's a long run and since I have both edges exposed from the build up pieces, putting a strip on the front takes out any variations in alignment between those two pieces and gives me a nice straight edge for the front of the countertop. Now we turn to sticking the laminate on this top and it's just a process that you work through. We need to cut strips that are going on the edge of the top that will be glued in place. We'll make the strips a little wider than they need to be, the reason for which will be obvious as we get started. Working with laminate is easy to get into because you don't really have to have a lot of specialized tools. Here are some of the tools you will need to get in order to get going in a pretty serious way. Obviously you need a router to cut the laminate to its finished dimensions once it's installed, but beyond that a few rollers are helpful to press the laminate in place. You need cutters to score the laminate with, and here are a couple of examples of that. Unfortunately these blades for this utility knife are not made any longer as far as I've been able to find. They are the best scoring blades for laminate that I've ever used. But these other blades work fine and they are readily available at any of the home improvement stores around. You need a straight edge to cut with, and then a file or several files, and that's pretty much it. 
This cutter can be handy as well, but it is not necessary either. As far as router bits needed, there are two types. One is a straight cutoff bit that trims the laminate to the edge of your top at a 90 degree square cut. I just recently tried this bit and it has a different type of bearing that rests against the top as you're trimming. The main benefit for it is that it's taking away the possibility that the bearing might get hung up or freeze up and in so doing potentially burn your laminate with the bearing. The other bit you need is a bevel bit that will trim your finish cut on your laminate at an angle rather than square. The benefit of this is that it takes away material that otherwise you would have to hand file off to take the sharp edge off your countertop. But that's it, and these bits are very inexpensive as well. I began by cutting the edge strips so that they overlap the countertop all the way around the areas they will be stuck to. I also square up one good edge at the corner of these strips that are pressed tightly against the adjoining strip that runs across the length of the front. I'm using a contact cement product that performs really well with laminate. You coat both surfaces to be stuck together with this and let it dry for about 10 minutes. Then when those surfaces are brought back together again, it makes a permanent bond. This particular type is what I call flammable because it is. I often call it a lot of other names, not on camera because of the way that it smells. It's such a good product, but it's also evil, wicked, and horrible to work with. So I've always been caught in a little bit of a quandary because it is such a good product, but it's terrible to work with. I've tried other non-flammable contact cements, but just never have been quite happy with them as compared to this product. So I always make sure I wear a respirator and have good airflow when I'm working with it. After two coats of contact cement on both the laminate and the countertop, I begin the process of sticking the laminate by aligning the bottom edge of my pieces with the bottom edge of the countertop and then lightly pressing them into place down the length of the strip. It is stuck at this point, but you need to take a roller with some pressure behind it and roll the strips into place, making sure there's good contact between the surfaces. At this point, the only way to get the strip off is to destroy it into a bunch of pieces because it is not coming off. I do the same thing with the side pieces, making sure that I butt the end of the side piece tightly against the piece at the front edge to make a good corner. Now it's time for the router with a straight square cut bit on it. You place the bearing of the router bit on the top of the countertop after adjusting the router bit to a good depth and then make passes down the length of the edge to trim the laminate flush with the top of the surface. You need to be really careful at the corners because the router bit can chip the material at this point sometimes breaking it down into the surface where you don't want to do any damage. So I work my way into the corner and then use a file at that point when I can't finish the cut with the router, filing the corner down flush with the countertop. Once the cut is made all the way around the countertop, I take a file again and run it along the top surface of the countertop to make sure the laminate is flush with the edge all the way around. Using the file is just something that takes some practice to learn to do. It's hard to explain exactly how to use it, but you get the feel of it pretty quickly. Now getting back to where we began this video, which is sticking the top. Make sure you get all the shavings from the router off the countertop and that the backside of the laminate is completely clean as well. Anything that gets brushed into the contact cement will be forever trapped under the surface, so it's really important to keep anything from getting between the two. This is when fumes really get tough now because you're spreading a large surface area and you're also working right over the top of it. For some reason, I've always found the fumes to be the worst in the winter time. I don't know why that is the case, but it just always seems to me to be that way. I remember about 40 years ago when I was first learning to do this and working in people's kitchens installing new countertops. You turned off their hot water heaters, opened windows as best you could, but there was no way of getting away from the fumes when you were brushing this under cabinets, particularly when there's no such thing as respirators for this type of work back in that day. I burned up a lot of brain cells during those few years, and so nowadays I try to protect what I have left as best I can. This is kind of the most nerve-wracking part, but if you're careful and use strips like I'm doing, it's not really that big of a deal. You just want to use enough strips to make sure the surfaces don't touch before you're ready for them to. If you're using wood strips like I am, also make sure you don't have any splinters or other shavings on them that might pull off when you start sticking the top. I cut my top about a half to three quarters an inch larger than the countertop, 
so I have plenty of play to adjust the top so that it overhangs perfectly. Once all looks good, I start in the center, pull my first strip, make sure everything still looks good, and then working from the center, pull the remaining strips and gently press the whole top into place. You now follow with rollers to make sure the whole surface is pressed into its permanent position. The great thing about laminate is there's no curing time necessary. The contact cement is doing its job right now, so I can switch bits on my router to a bevel cut and then run it around the edge of the countertop to get the almost finished edge. This is where the file work comes back and it's now necessary to get the edge carefully cleaned up as necessary and then take small pieces of cloth dampened with lacquer thinner to remove any excess contact cement that still may be on the surface. This is how it looks when it's all cleaned up. Another great thing about laminate is that there's no finishing required as there is with wood. The surface is what it is and there are literally hundreds of choices of laminates to pick from. That's not a bad looking computer desk for young Nick if I do say so myself.